The overall goal of the following experiment is to synthesize a pillared paddle wheel metal organic framework, or MOF, that is difficult to obtain de novo using solvent assisted linker exchange, or SAIL, and to activate it via supercritical carbon dioxide drying. This is achieved by solvothermally synthesizing the parent MOF, which is easy to access de novo from zinc nitrate hexahydrate N N prime di 4 pyridyl naphthalene tetracarboxy diamide and 14 dibromo 2356 tetracus 4 carboxyphenyl benzene in an acidic DMF solution in order to use it as a sale template. As a second step, the crystals of the parent MOF are subjected to the sale reaction with the DMF solution of the linker of choice, which yields the desired daughter MOF product, Salem 5. Next, the DMF solvent in the pores of Salem 5 is removed by performing solvent exchange with ethanol and activation with supercritical carbon dioxide in order to render the material suitable for applications involving gas sorption. The results show retention of framework topology, incorporation of the daughter linkers into the Salem 5 framework, and prevention of framework collapse upon activation based on powder X-ray diffraction in a spinning capillary, proton nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, and observation of the crystal images of the activated MOF and collection of nitrogen isotherms, respectively. Our hope is that this video can provide insight into alternative routes toward the synthesis and activation of challenging MOFs, as well as alert against common pitfalls committed when handling fragile MOF structures. Additionally, solvent-assisted linker exchange can be applied to a wide range of MOF structures beside the pillar paddle wheel systems on which this video is focused. The main advantage of solvent-assisted linker exchange over existing methods is its versatility and efficiency, combined with its facile implementation. SAIL ameliorates problems associated with linker solubility and typically leads to an almost quantitative synthesis of the daughter MOF. Powder X-ray diffraction is a powerful technique to confirm the SAIL reaction has occurred. The method presented here keeps the crystals in their mother liquor, which ensures the MOF framework remains intact. Demonstrating the procedure will be Dr. Rachel Clitt, a postdoc from our lab. First, weigh out 50 milligrams of zinc nitrate hexahydrate, 37.8 milligrams of DPNI, and 64.5 milligrams of BRTCPB. Combine all solid ingredients in a 4 gram vial. Add 10 milliliters of DMF to the vial containing the solid ingredients. Then using a 9-inch Pasteur pipette, add one drop of concentrated hydrochloric acid. After tightly capping the vial, thoroughly mix the ingredients using an ultrasonication bath for about 15 minutes, observing the contents of the vial as they form a suspension. Next, place the vial in an oven at 80 degrees Celsius for two days. On day one, Check the vial to ensure that its contents have completely dissolved, forming a yellow clear solution. On day two, observe yellow tear-shaped crystals on the walls and the bottom of the vial. Once the vial has been removed from the oven and cooled to room temperature, use a spatula to gently push the crystals off the vial walls so that they all collect on the floor of the vial. After allowing the crystals to settle on the floor of the vial, Gently remove the reaction solution from the vial using a 9-inch Pasteur pipette without sucking up the crystals into the pipette. Add about 5 milliliters of fresh DMF to the vial with the crystals to soak them for at least one day in order to remove the acidic reaction solution and any unreacted ingredients trapped in the pores. At this point, Prepare a 0.7 mm diameter borosilicate glass capillary by carefully cutting off the closed end so that the top 3 cm of the capillary with the funnel top remains. Dip the narrow cut end of the capillary into melted beeswax. After letting the wax solidify as a plug in the bottom of the capillary, support it in a small amount of modeling clay. Using a Pasteur pipette, draw up several milliliters of crystals in solution. Carefully transfer the crystals and solution to the capillary through the funnel opening. Use a paper towel or tissue to wick away excess solvent. Next, allow the crystals to settle into the small plug of beeswax. Use a very small piece of modeling clay to seal the top end of the capillary. 
To prepare for powder x-ray diffraction analysis, remove any mounting devices from the goniometer head and place the capillary supported by modeling clay on top of it. Center the capillary in the x-ray beam to ensure that the plug of crystals does not precess as it rotates. Following powder x-ray diffraction analysis, weigh out 21 mg of DPED and transfer it to a 2 gram vial. After adding 5 mL of DMF to the vial, dissolve the DPED with ultrasonication. Using a 6-inch Pasteur pipette, collect the Broyumov crystals and filter them on a Buchner funnel. Then disperse about 30 mg of the crystals in the previously prepared DPED solution. Place the resulting sale mixture in an oven at 100 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. On the next day, check the progress of the sale reaction with Proton NMR. With a 6-inch Pasteur pipette, remove approximately 2 to 5 mg of the MOF crystals from the cooled reaction solution. Rinse these crystals by submerging them in a small amount of clean solvent such as DMF in a 1.5 gram vial. Following this, Add about 1 milliliter of deuterated dimethyl sulfoxide to a separate 1.5 gram vial. Once the crystals have been filtered from the cleaning solution, disperse them in deuterated dimethyl sulfoxide. Then, add 3 drops of deuterated sulfuric acid to the mixture. Thoroughly sonicate the capped vial to obtain a homogeneous solution. When finished, transfer the resulting sample to an NMR tube with a Pasteur pipette. Then collect the NMR spectrum, performing 64 scans since the solution is relatively dilute due to the low solubility of the MOF crystals. Following solvent exchange with ethanol, transfer the MOF crystals to an activation dish using a 6-inch Pasteur pipette. Then remove as much of the ethanol as possible with a 9-inch Pasteur pipette without sucking the crystals up into the pipette. Remove the lid of the activation chamber by unscrewing the three bolts and inspect the chamber for residual MOF debris. Using a pair of forceps, insert the activation dish with the MOF into the chamber and screw the lid back into its place. Next, turn the dryer on and open the carbon dioxide tank. Adjust the temperature knob to achieve a temperature between 0 and 10 degrees Celsius. Once the temperature is in the correct range, turn up the fill knob slowly. Observe liquid carbon dioxide pouring into the activation dish through the glass window on the chamber lid. To perform the first purge, turn the fill knob up to the mark that reads 15. Then slowly turn up the purge knob until a jet of solvent shoots out from the tube on the side of the instrument. After letting the purge go on for about 5 minutes, close the purge knob and turn the fill knob down to the mark that reads 5. After 8 hours of supercritical drying, turn all the knobs off and flip the heat switch on. Once the temperature and pressure exceed the supercritical point, connect a flow meter to the tube on the side of the instrument and open the bleed knob. Adjust the flow to 1 cubic centimeter per minute. Then remove the flow meter, allowing the carbon dioxide to slowly bleed from the sample. The next day, check that the pressure has dropped to 0 psi. If the pressure has not dropped to this level, turn up the bleed knob until the desired pressure drop is achieved. After closing the bleed knob, turn off the heat and power switches on the instrument. Shown here is a Broyumov crystal and the same crystal transformed into Salem 5 is displayed here. As is the case with single crystal to single crystal reactions, the crystal size and morphology do not change. However, cracks develop on the surface due to the harsh nature of sale, rendering the Salem 5 crystal not amenable to single crystal X-ray diffraction data collection. When the Broyumov synthesis is applied to the Salem 5 synthesis, the proton NMR shows absence of DPED, to halt the functionalized linker interaction, SAIL is used to access Salem 5. A typical SAIL involving DPNI as a leaving pillar requires less than 24 hours with greater than 99% of the pillar being replaced. Since many pillared paddle wheel moths lose crystallinity when dry, PXRD that employs mounting material on glass produces a pattern that may not contain all the peaks. In this case, the peak corresponding to the reflection coming from the C-axis direction 
along which the nitrogen donor pillars lie, is the first peak. The first peak position at a lower 2 theta angle signifies the presence of a larger unit cell in the C-axis direction. Crystal images of NU100 upon conventional heat and vacuum activation and upon supercritical carbon dioxide drying are shown here. While the former leads to framework collapse and porosity destruction, supercritical carbon dioxide drying leads to a BET surface area of about 6,140 square meters per gram. Following this procedure, other difficult to synthesize MOFs can be obtained, while preventing their delicate frameworks from degradation during their study and allowing access to their evacuated pores. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how to perform some helpful methods for MOF synthesis, characterization, and activation towards gas sorption applications. By preparing powder X-ray diffraction samples in capillaries to be mounted on the diffractometer, solvent-sensitive crystals of any type can be analyzed without fear of sample degradation.